My name is Neil Malik from Knack Training, and in today's everyday office video, I'm going to cover the fundamentals of using the VLOOKUP function. VLOOKUP stands for Vertical Lookup, meaning that when you have a set of data, like this one that you can see on my screen right here, as you're looking for something, what you're going to do is you're going to look vertically down the page. You're going to look for the property IDs, for example. You're going to say, is this the property ID I'm looking for? Is this the property ID I'm looking for? And you're going to keep looking vertically until you find it. Excel also has an H lookup for horizontal lookup, but most people arrange their data so that they look vertically down the page until they find what they're looking for. So as you can see in my demo file here, if I click on cell A5 and use the drop down menu, you'll see that I have a list of all the different records in here. So I'm going to look for RMEG5869. So very simply, what VLOOKUP is going to let us do is look vertically down this column right here until it runs into RMEG5869. Then, we need to tell it which piece of information we want to retrieve. We can find information like who the agent is or what the sale price is by telling it to go across from RMEG5869 until you find the agent column or until you find the sale price column. Then, retrieve that bit of information so that we have what we're looking for. So I go to cell B5, and if I go to the Formulas tab at the top of the screen, you'll notice that Lookup and Reference is one of the drop-down menus. Here, I go to the last entry called VLOOKUP. If I click on the VLOOKUP, it asks me for four pieces of information to successfully do its job. The first bit of information is, what is the value that I'm trying to match? And you've seen here that I've put RMEG5869 as the value I'm trying to match. You could have written this by hand, but I gave you a drop down menu for this exercise. The next idea is where is the information that we're going to use as our reference material? Now we go for the table array from cell A7 all the way across to the farthest right hand column, which is cell L7, and then all the way down to the last row of the data. There are keyboard shortcuts to accomplish this. But we're going to go ahead and select it that way. Now let's take a moment and actually look at what happened here with the table array. As you can see, we started in the top left-hand corner of the data, cell A7, and went all the way to the bottom right-hand corner of the data, cell L930. But at no point in this function am I going to have to tell it where the property ID column is. And that's because what VLOOKUP does is it always looks in the left-hand column, the furthest left column of this data, for a match for the thing that you're looking for. This will be something that we'll want to tackle in future everyday offices, how we can manage this type of situation and potentially get the same idea as VLOOKUP, but allowing it to use other columns besides the first. Next, we have the column index number. Now the column index number is which column you want to retrieve. And in the case of the agent, we actually sit down and count this out. Property ID is column number one. Date initiated is column number two. Date sold is three. Property type is four. Subtype is five. Region is six. And the agent is column number seven. Now again, I don't like this idea of having to sit down and count out which column we're actually interested in. So in future everyday office videos, I'm going to show you how to look for what the column index number of that value actually is. The final cell is the one that everybody leaves off by accident, and it always causes problems. The modern use of VLOOKUP is usually for unique values. 
Meaning in this case, if I'm looking for property ID RMEG5869, you should be able to find exactly that entry and you shouldn't have to go looking for something that's close to that entry. A uh, property ID that is close to RMEG5869 is not the right answer. It just happens to be close to it. In the old days, though, there were a lot more lookups where they were looking for something that was at least close to the value that they wanted. And so the range lookup, if you leave it empty, is the same thing as saying, find me a close enough match, not an exact match. What we're going to do is type in the word false into the range lookup box, which will be the right answer anytime you want to find the exact match for a particular value. When I click OK, you notice that the agent that it brings back for RMEG5869, that person's name is Gorski. And when I use the drop down menu here for the property ID, and I choose the first one, RTMH5770, it says that the agent's name is Hume. And that is accurate.